This video is for the revision of Haber process IG level. Haber process is a reversible reaction. So we use the reversible arrow here. And this process is to form ammonia. So one mole of nitrogen gas will react with three moles of hydrogen gas, and that will form two moles of ammonia gas. And this process is exothermic, meaning it will release heat. Before we start, we must know what is dynamic equilibrium. So this reaction can be at dynamic equilibrium. When is that? That is when the rate of the forward reaction is the same as the rate of the reverse reaction. At that point, you don't see a change in their concentrations anymore. It became constant. But actually, the reaction is still moving forward and reverse at the same rate. Now, Le Chatelier says that if you make a change um, to a system that is already at equilibrium, it will try to oppose that change. The system itself will try to oppose that change. So let's discuss the changes that we can make. So this equilibrium can only occur, this dynamic equilibrium can only occur if it's in a closed system. Closed meaning what? Means there's no change in temperature, no change in pressure. You don't remove any reactants or products. You don't add any moles of anything inside. That is a closed system. So dynamic equilibrium can only occur if it's a closed system. When this reaction is finally at equilibrium, at dynamic equilibrium, if we were to change the temperature, it will change the composition of the reactants or products. Okay, let's discuss each of these uh, changes. First, temperature. This is an exothermic reaction, meaning that nitrogen and hydrogen, when it forms ammonia, it's going to release heat. So the container is going to feel hot, very hot. What happens if I increase the temperature of the container that contains this system? Okay, so increase in temperature. It's going to favor a decrease in temperature. So it's trying to favor the side where the reaction will try to decrease the temperature because it wants to oppose that change that you made. So when you increase the temperature, it becomes very hot. It will try to go towards the side that makes the container cool down. Therefore, it's going to favor the endothermic side of the reaction. So since we know that this reaction is exothermic, so going towards the right side is exothermic, meaning going towards the left side is endothermic. So if we increase the temperature, it's going to favor the reverse reaction. So we can say that the reaction shifts to the left. If it shifts to the left, it means that I have less ammonia. So that's not what we really want. Actually, this industry sells ammonia. So we want to have more ammonia. So increasing the temperature actually doesn't favor having more yield. Okay, but we'll discuss further about that later. Next, we're going to discuss about pressure first. Okay, increase in pressure. Increase in pressure will favor the side that will decrease the pressure. How to decrease the pressure? By going to the side where there's less moles of gas. So if you look at this equation, there's four moles of gas on the left and only two moles of gas on the right. So if I increase the pressure, it's going to favor the side that will decrease the pressure, which is to the side with lesser moles of gas. So since it shifts right, so I'll get more yield. So I can say that low temperature gives me more percentage of yield and also high pressure gives me more percentage of yield. But wait, don't stop there because that's not the end of our discussion yet. We'll go back to the temperature and pressure in a while. Let's see what happens if we remove the ammonia. So uh, this is an industry. So definitely they're gonna take out the ammonia so that they can sell it. So if I keep removing the ammonia, then it's not at equilibrium anymore. I've disturbed the equilibrium. So this system will try to form more ammonia. So the reaction is going to shift to the right. The catalyst that we add here is iron, as in Fe. 
And this iron doesn't shift the equilibrium to the right nor the left, but it will speed up the whole reaction. So it will speed up the forward reaction. It will also speed up the reverse reaction equally. So you will get, uh, you will reach equilibrium faster. In actual industries, they use 200 ATM pressure and 450 degrees Celsius. Now let's look at what we discussed just now. But we said that low temperature gives us more percentage of yield. Then why did they use 450 that is very high? Why not just room temperature or cool it down? The reason is because they do want this reaction to be faster. So when we increase the temperature, it speeds up the reaction, increase the rate of reaction because there's more collision. So this is a compromise. We don't want the temperature to be too high, but we don't want it to be too low that it becomes too slow. Now this reaction is exothermic, so it will release even more heat. So even though you start off with uh, at 450 degrees Celsius, after the reaction, it's going to go rise all the way up to 800 or even 1000. So we do need to cool it down back to 450 so that we won't get too little yield because we know that too high a temperature is going to reduce our yield of ammonia. So therefore, we need to cool it down back to 450. So this is actually a compromise. The actual pressure used is 200 ATM, which is quite high uh, because we said we discussed here that increase in pressure favors fewer moles of gas, which is to the side of ammonia. So this high pressure will favor the yield of ammonia. So this is what it roughly looks like. We have our um, nitrogen and hydrogen. It goes in here and then it enters this uh, compartment where it's converted to ammonia. But remember, there's still leftover of uh, nitrogen and hydrogen because it's a reversible reaction. So it will never become um, ammonia 100%. This is where the reversible reaction happens. This is the bed of catalysts. So we have the iron here and the uh, temperature and pressure that we want. And all three will come out here. It will be cooled down back to 450 before it enters again. So we don't want it to be higher than 450 because then we'll get very little percentage of ammonia. That's why it needs to be cooled down back to 450. Okay, the other function of the cooling is also so that the ammonia gas becomes ammonia liquid here. 